I think this was a really bad idea. I don't know if I can do this. I just don't know if I can do this. I'm over halfway and I'm absolutely exhausted. It's four o'clock in the morning. Just got a free charge. I just charged up to 90% because I was so tired. I just kind of slept a little bit. Uh, luckily, the charge was free. Electrify America uh, saved me over 15 bucks on this charge. Thank you. Well, I guess I better get on down the road. And uh, if I need to, I guess I'll just stop and sleep some more, but just totally worn out. I think this was a really bad idea. tip here as you come into the town of Forsyth. Typically there is traffic south of Atlanta and as you come into Forsyth the interstate starts to widen. Construction finishes. It becomes well lit and Forsyth is a wonderful town should you enjoy speeding tickets. So as you're going through here watch the speed limit. Slow down. It's not worth the two or three um, extra miles an hour that you might gain going so just be size. forewarned I have received a ticket my dad, my brother, my mom my wife, just about everybody I know has received a ticket right here in Forsyth, Georgia so be careful, don't speed go the speed limit well we made it through Forsyth safely no speeding tickets we observed all posted speed limits and uh, didn't see any police out, but it seems like every time I've gone through here, there are people pulled over left and right. So be careful. You've been ready to hit the 475 or the 675, um, uh, the make and bypass. <laughs> I can't remember. It's 445 in the morning, and I'm not thinking so straight. All right, better keep my eyes on the road. I really need to get some coffee. Luckily, there's a Bucky's here. Don't know what a Bucky's is? And in case oh, you yeah. think that's the I'm end, I'm gonna show you. Because there's even more. Bucky's has a whole lot of chargers. Well, we're not charging this trip. Some brisket, Rice Krispie treats, and we're charging up our rig. Now we're gonna go in and get some Bucky Nuggets. Yeah. So I did an inspection all around the car and it doesn't look like there was any damage from the uh, pile of furniture we ran through or the other um, uh, object that we ran over. So it made some sort of noise on the undercarriage. I didn't get underneath to check that. But it, it did, wasn't that hard, so but got my flashlight out, checked all the way around all the areas, and so that's good. Well, we're going to go inside and Bucky's and stretch, get some caffeine, and just all around enjoy the wonderful world of Bucky. Well, the sun is finally coming up, which is a good thing because I am totally exhausted and uh, ready for some breakfast. And we have the triple jackpot. You want to know what that is? The triple jackpot is when you have a Waffle House. Uh, Electrify America supercharger and a Tesla supercharger all at the same exit. So that allows you to precondition the battery and then roll right up to the uh, Electrify America supercharger and then charge and then go over and get something to eat and you can go back out and leave your car when you're done. Also, uh, good news is the temperature outside has come up. Uh, most of the way down has been in about 30, 31 degrees. Right now, here in southern Georgia, it is 40. Show you what our efficiencies look like. Uh, over the last 30 miles, we've been running about 281 watt hours per mile. And then since our last charge, we've been running 282 uh, watt hours per mile. So right now we've got uh, 171 miles that we've driven so far and as you can see our range is currently sitting at 61 miles or 22% and 
so we should get to the charger with about 9% battery left. I expect for that to drop a little bit more because when you precondition the battery, you start to use a lot more energy to heat the battery pack up to accept the um, to accept all those electrons and the charge so it can charge quickly. So uh, feeling much better now after our stop at Bucky's and also the stop um, south of Atlanta when we charged, uh, just was really tired and we got a free charge as I uh, shared earlier. And rather than having to worry about time or how much charge, I just let the car charge up to 90% and just got a little bit of shut eye. Even if it was like for about 30 minutes, I think I got some sleep. And so feel pretty refreshed right now. See the road is uh, wide open. And so we're really doing well uh, going down the road with uh, travel. You would at Bucky's that uh, everyone was out but clearly as you can see on the road here it's pretty empty and so we're enjoying uh, not having any traffic as we head down to Florida so we're going to be stopping in uh, Valdosta Georgia for Electrify America uh, Waffle House for some breakfast some good coffee and then we're going to use the Tesla software to precondition the battery by selecting the Tesla supercharger which is right there at the same exit in the same vicinity and so we'll just simply just drive past the Tesla supercharger and go to Electrify So anyway, the trip's going really well, and um, I'm ready for it to be over, but right now, making really good time in my opinion. I'm kind of curious to see what our total trip time has been, our total drive time, and, um, and just uh, how we've been doing. But on the first half of the trip, I think I calculated it was about $19 in charging. Uh, overall to go about 525 miles so that's really just uh, just banging I mean you couldn't couldn't ask for a better uh, better trip if we had paid for the last charge that we charged at that would have been $15 I think is what Electrify America was saying and um, but I think that's the the high-end rate and with the EA pass or EA premium you save about 25 to 35 on the charging so I think I calculated it it looked like the electricity uh, supercharge the Electrify America charging was about 12.9 cents per kilowatt hour so it's really cheap uh, in my opinion in Ohio it's sitting at about 10 point uh, 10 point anyway, four still we pay two cents more uh, while traveling supercharging is really remarkable it is rather inconvenient because every time I stop I have to uh, put in the new destination uh, from a better route planner so it kind of calculates and says hey you need to stop here I then share that with the Tesla add it as a um, as a waypoint in the, uh, the navigation and then it simply navigates there and then what I do is I just select remove all charging stops and as a result it kind of takes all the charging stops out so that way I know exactly what I'm going to get to Electrify America whether I'll make it there or not and so right now we're projecting to get there with about uh, less than 9%. It'd probably be a little bit less right now. But being that we're in uh, the flatlands of Georgia and the temperatures coming up, hopefully we start to see our efficiency get a lot better. I'm really curious to see if we can get to that 100% efficiency. I don't think we're quite there. I think we'll be in the high 90s, in the mid, uh, low to mid 90s uh, from an efficiency standpoint on this trip. But I think after this, as the temps come up, and we have to heat the battery and the car, we should be able to really uh, get good efficiency uh, driving down as we go into Florida. Well, hey, we'll catch up with you at the uh, Electrify America Charger in Valdosta, and we'll let you know what we find out. We'll see you there. And as quickly as I signed off, the um, car has started to precondition the battery in preparation for the supercharger. It's usually about 25 to 27 minutes, it seems like precondition the battery so uh, precondition the rest of the way get the battery nice and hot so it's ready to accept all that charge and we'll see it's nice that we're rolling in less than 20% uh, because it charges really fast uh, less than 20 so you really get that peak charging rate when you come in less than 20% so couldn't be happier with the trip and just the timing of the charges and I am ready for some hash browns scattered and smothered and some scrambled eggs, and most of all, some coffee. I need a pick-me-up right now. All right, we'll see you at the charger. Well, we made it here to the we made it here to the Electrify America station. There's nothing like rolling in with a nice low charge. So we rolled in with about six percent, 
and I'm going to go ahead and get plugged up and I'll let you know what happens. Let's take a look at the Tessie app and see our latest leg, what our efficiency was. Well, wouldn't you know uh, you it, see here, average as speed, I'm walking into Walmart hour, after the car starts uh, initializing flat, charging, uh, elevation with a little it bit says of charging failed. So I tried to initialize it again, didn't work. So I'm going to move over so to a different stall. Really I saw a uh, 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 Model 3 owner are coming up, but again, uh, who was there charging with the CCS1 adapter. So I'm going to give that a try. But so far, the other... Uh, let's see, cabinet three, 350 kilowatt charger in Valdosta. No bueno. Let's give it a go. Let's see if we can move over and uh, see if we can get charging. So it looks like we got it to initialize. In the app, it only says 50 kilowatts. The cabinet says 300, uh, where it is, 350 kilowatts. So it looks like we're charging. Let's get inside and see what we're pulling because if it's 50 kilowatts, we're going to be here all day long. And that is not gonna be fun well it looks like we're pulling 122 kilowatts right now so that is not bad and it looks like we've got about 40 minutes remaining to charge so it looks like it's slowly ramping up I'll report back in a few minutes um, just on how the peak charging goes well well the charging is underway here at Electrify America Kind of odd, it said 50 kilowatts on the app, but clearly on the cabinet it says 350. Right now it looks like we're pulling 120 kilowatts. We'll see if we can um, get some additional um, uh, uh, current going through. Uh, the cable was a little bit warm, so it must have been the same one that the, pre that the other Model 3 owner was using. I don't know if that makes an impact or not. So I looked at our driving efficiency. The temperature, the outside temperature has come up. It is now 46 degrees, so it is still pretty cold for southern Georgia. However, the efficiency was about 84% on the lake from Bucky's, which we just stopped at earlier, and then before that was like 91. So we're still not quite getting 100% uh, efficiency in the uh, Tesla Model Y. But good to be going and just glad we're going down. Uh, interestingly enough, our um, tire pressure is just a tad low, but I think, you know, it's running like 44 PSI right now when it's hot, so it's probably just maybe a pound or two low. So, but really enjoying the trip. No traffic out. Uh, Walmart was, uh, bathrooms are very clean. Folks are very nice. And uh, aside from being a Walmart, it was good to have some facilities and uh, get out. So we're looking forward to getting some breakfast here in a few minutes. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and charge, check emails, and uh, just see what else is going on. Well, we've got enough charge. We picked up. Uh, we're sitting at about 66% in about 23 minutes. It cost us all of $2.75. Going to go ahead and unplug, get some Waffle House, and then we'll be, we have enough charge to get to uh, Gainesville, which will be our next stop, which will be our final charge before we get to the Orlando International Airport, and then head over to the resort at Reunion. So going to go ahead and unplug. And let's get on the road and get some Waffle House, which is just like two blocks that a direction. So looking forward to eating. Hit stop. So we picked up 48 kilowatts for $2.87. I'll go ahead and press the button here and unplug. Yep, there we go. Three dollars now. And it looks like I need to shut the trunk. And in case you're wondering, not even hot. Doesn't even feel warm, even just barely warm, just here at the base uh, that inserts into the Tesla. So, uh, working pretty good. We're gonna rock and roll. Well, we are just rolling across the Florida border and the sun is out. It is nice to see sunshine. And we'll welcome sign. Let's see if we can uh, get this in focus here. So as we roll across, it 
feels like we're making progress on our We've got one more stop. We're going to stop in Gainesville, uh, Florida, and we'll charge. We're going to arrive there with about 23%, it looks like, and we're going to need to charge up to about 80% to be able to go to the resort. We're going to drop some luggage off early. We're going to head to the, to the Orlando airport, pick my wife up, and then we're going to head back to the resort and then check in. So just want to be able to not have to mess with charging in between while we're at the resort, going back to the airport, and then back to the resort. And so we'll finish up our trip, and then uh, I'll tally up some of the stats, and we'll uh, uh, keep those. I think the key for this trip is to compare how Electrify America works or compares to Tesla. Cost, time, charging, convenience, all of those things we're going to do head to head. So on the return trip back to Ohio, the thousand mile return trip, we're going to do a full uh, Tesla uh, trip. I can already tell you it's going to be easier because you don't have to do any of the uh, better uh, a better route plan or anything like that. You simply just plug it in and you rock and roll and the car tells you when to show up, how long to charge, how long you need to stay, and uh, it does all of that thing, all of those things for you. So it makes it super easy. I'm really interested in the cost to see because I've been so surprised with how cheap Electrify America is. In fact, it is almost as cheap as home charging, which is just bonkers. So anyways, pretty cool uh, stuff. And so anyways, glad to be in Florida. Sun is kind of out, getting a little bit of the Florida showers, but we're gonna stop in Gainesville for our last Electrify America charging stop on the trip. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it is a non-event uh, however, it seems like about 50-50 we need to change stalls whenever we arrive at an Electrify America station. So we'll see if we can make it without and kind of get that percentage down. But overall, Electrify America has worked, but it has not been without headache. And it has not been as fast as they've, uh, as they've promised or marketed. And several of the stations have the newer cabinets. Uh, so we'll see. Anyways, we'll see you down uh, at Gainesville, and we'll report back on the charging, how far we've gone, what the efficiency is. Uh, I don't think our efficiency is going to be real great. We're really sucking down the uh, the electricity. I don't know whether it's air conditioning, whether it's just because the car's in Florida and it doesn't know what to do. I'm just kidding. Uh, but overall, trip's going well. Autopilot has been a true game changer. It really just takes the stress out of driving. So what typically would be a 16, 17 hour trip is really super simple. And aside from just being physically tired from staying up all night to drive straight through, we left Ohio, Cincinnati, uh, Hamilton area at about 5 p.m. and then drove straight down. And so we're gonna uh, show you driving time, show you how much we stopped. We did take a sit down dinner uh, at Waffle House and then we had two really bad experiences with Taco Bell waiting in the drive through in fact, one of them, we were stuck in there for 40 minutes. So we'll kind of factor a little bit of that out because that is not normal and that should not uh, in any way influence uh, the trip. And so I really want to get a true head-to-head -head comparison, uh, gas car, ice car versus electric on Electrify America and then electric using Tesla on the return trip. And this is a holiday weekend, so but we're going to drive both times uh, early in the morning, late at night, so we should miss most of the traffic for an easy comparison so we'll see you in Gainesville we'll hit you up there and we'll let you know how things are going well Electrify America failed I had a complimentary session and I could not get the charger to initiate there were only four uh, cabinets Three of them were occupied and there were four or five other cars and several folks uh, who were there were in line and waiting for this uh, Tesla Supercharger. So we've got to get enough charge to get to our next destination. So we're just going to get enough to get to the next Electrify America in Davenport. And then we're going to uh, uh, finish up our trip. So unfortunately... We're gonna to have to use Tesla on this trip because I just don't have time to wait. We've gotta to get to the airport to pick my wife up and my son when they fly in. So anyway, it's gonna go stretch our legs. Uh, let's see, looks like we're pulling about 116 kilowatts, 17 kilowatts. So I believe these are 150 kilowatt chargers here because they're A and B and they have the, uh, 
the large cord uh, versus the jet the version two ones which have the smaller narrower cord and are 250 kilowatts per cabinet so we'll see if we can peak a little bit but we're already over 25 percent and moving along so we're gonna go stretch our legs figure out what charge we need to get to get to our next charger and then we're gonna head out and uh, skip along so I gotta way. say it's pretty frustrating to not be able to charge and I could have waited. There were six cars backed up at the Electrify America station. I didn't feel right about doing that because I did have Tesla Supercharger just about a quarter mile down the road. When I talked with several of the folks, everyone there was for their free supercharging so they wouldn't have to pay at home because this was part of their complimentary. So Mustang, ID4, and a uh, some sort of uh, Kia or uh, Hyundai, uh, one of the two. And all of them were up from Ocala because Ocala has no Electrify America. So that's why they were all there charging. So it's really kind of a hot spot to charge. There's only four cabinets. One of the cabinets didn't even work and that's the one that I tried to use. So obviously there's a reason why. Um, so we're gonna just top up just enough to get to the next Electrify America station in Davenport, finish up our trip, and then we'll uh, head to the Orlando airport to pick my wife up. So we gotta get there in time. So that's why I didn't wanna wait, didn't wanna block anyone else out. Um, but this free charging is really stupid. People need to charge at home and um, the Car manufacturers need to quit giving it away. So anyways, my two cents, but overall the trip's going well I'm gonna go in and take a look at the efficiency here But uh, really kind of pushing the skinny pedal to get there quick and driving almost 80 so efficiency has gone out the window So let's take a look here So as you can see, our efficiency was pretty rotten, 77% efficiency. That's because we were going almost 80 miles an hour the whole time. Let's take a look at the Tessie app and look and, how our trip uh, went really from Valdosta to, to Gainesville. Orlando, kind of ready to you be can done see our average speed in so about 73 in miles an hour. Area. We lost There's a little bit of food, elevation. Uh, we used about half of our battery. 77% efficiency or 344 watt hours per mile. So far, unfortunately, we had to resort to Tesla because there was a huge line of Electrify America and the guy next to me and the Mustang Mach-E said he had to call to get the person on the other end to activate. He said he had been there for 45 minutes. He was pretty frustrated. Um, his home charger was screwed up, so he had to charge, And um, but he was getting his quote-unquote free charging that he got with Ford. Same thing with the Volkswagen and the Kia Hyundai Ioniq. So overall, people are taking advantage of the free charging, and in my opinion, they're charging up the fast charger. They're clogging up the fast chargers. Um, and unfortunately for those who are on road trips uh, out and about, uh, they're unable to use them, but hey, you could say the same for me because I'm using Electrify America instead of Tesla But on the way back, we'll solely use Tesla on the way back and we'll compare cost time convenience uh, the computer and uh, all of those other things uh, From there, but overall about 10 minutes. We'll head out So you may be wondering how much did it cost to go from about 12% up to 67% the $15 Tesla's pretty expensive charging. So far, EA has been anywhere from $2 to $4 uh, to charge. I think the most expensive session I had was $15. However, that was completely free. So that's what it would have cost at the rack rate. And then use the EA membership, you get about 25 to 40% off. Well, we made it here to the Florida Mall in Orlando. If you can tell by my face, I've been up over 36 hours and I'm exhausted. <laughs> but we made it to the Charger, Electrify America. We, there were two open stations. Uh, we've got a couple of them. kilowatts so not super fast but we're sitting at 22% so we'll see if that picks up here in a few minutes let's take a look at our efficiency since our last 
Uh, last trip, it looks like we've got 115 miles or 952 miles total. We averaged 296 watt hours per mile. We've used 292 kilowatts total. And we'll get the car or the Tesla filled back up here. We'll take a look at Tessie and take a, and see how the efficiency looks. And Well, this is uh, rather a zoo. One, we're at the Florida Mall, which you can see, which is around so the holidays, the is really busy. And, we went and then on uh, top of that, to the, the Electrify Mall. America stations are all just jam-packed, and people are waiting in line, and so people are rather cranky. So but, not real great. You know, uh, but that's what it is. You pay here, you get in, you pay, and mile. you take your and spot. The temperature so anyways, we've got about 10 more minutes to go, and we'll be done. nice to be in Florida. Yeah, but so it's great to be in the Florida the sun, and, uh, feeling, already feeling a little bit better. Overall, I'll pick up uh, my wife here in about 10 minutes from uh, the Orlando America airport, for sure. and then we'll head over to the resort. We're going to be collecting all the stats, or I'll be collecting all the stats, and we'll be putting all this together in a future video. But for right now, we made it to Orlando. It is 1 p.m. on Saturday. We left at 5 p.m. on Friday evenings. You do the math on how long we've been inside this uh little bubble here we did do a couple of stops that took quite a few extra hours <clears throat> but overall electrify america much cheaper but i would say you get what you pay for so far i would say about 30 to 40 percent of the chargers that i hooked up to either did not work or they were exceedingly slow which resulted in me having to move them and then one time as you saw uh, previously in gainesville we had to completely move to tesla otherwise we would have been waiting for five or six other cars and uh, blocking other cars from getting charged, and I didn't want to do that. So overall, um, pretty good experience. I think Electrify America's got some work to do. We are at the new Super Fancy Pants Hyper uh, uh, DC Fast Charger that Electrify America's been rolling out. I don't really understand the naming nomenclature, but uh, anyways, this is the fastest 350 kilowatts and we are sitting here steady at 85 kilowatts. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get charged up. We gotta rearrange some of the luggage in the back. Hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe to stay informed of future content, and I'll be linking some of the future videos down below once those come out. Uh, otherwise, hope you have a wonderful one, and uh, it's your life. Make it a good one. Thank you.